This is the story of every movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe so far. Super handsome guys named Chris, assemble! No, not you. You wish you were part of this universe. Let's begin. Genius billionaire playboy philanthropist Tony Stark is taken hostage in Afghanistan by a terrorist group known as the Ten Rings. Stark pretends to craft a Jericho missile, but secretly builds a badass arc reactor powered metal suit that he uses to break free. Tony announces Stark Industries will no longer manufacture weapons, which really pisses off his business partner, Obadiah Stone. Pepper Potts discovers Stone hired the Ten Rings to kill Tony, but by the time she and a few agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. try to arrest Stone, he has already left Tony for dead and reverse engineered his own massive mech suit. Stark pops his old arc reactor back into his chest and flies in to save the day. Iron Man battles Iron Monger atop Stark Industries until Pepper overloads the original massive arc reactor, causing the surge that kills Stone. Tony announces to the world that he is Iron Man. He returns home to find Nick Fury lurking in the shadows waiting to discuss the Avenger Initiative. Dr. Bruce Banner is recruited by General Thunderbolt Ross to be the guinea pig for a gamma experiment intended to recreate the World War II era super soldier program. The experiment fails, turning Banner into the Hulk, who then destroys the lab and flees. A fugitive, Banner hides out in Brazil. Years later, Ross tracks him down and sends in a special military unit led by Emil Blonsky to capture Banner. Hulk smashes Blonsky and his agents three times until finally being captured. Blonsky injects himself with a mix of Banner's blood and the super soldier serum, turning him into the Abomination. Abom Nation rips to New York City until Banner leaps off a helicopter, transforms into Hulk, and takes the monstrosity down, uh, along with Cap Harlow. The palladium core of Stark's reactor is poisoning him. Facing certain death, Stark goes full YOLO, making Pepper CEO of Stark Industries and driving in the Monaco Grand Prix. Stark's droid ride in Monaco is interrupted by bird-loving mad scientist Ivan Bonko, aka Whiplash. Iron Man narrowly survives Whiplash's attack. Stark's business rival Justin Hammer breaks Whiplash out of prison to help produce knockoff Stark tech. Tony gets wasted at his birthday party and fights his BFF Lieutenant Colonel James Rode, who confiscates one of the Iron Man suits. Fury, Black Widow, and Stark discuss Vanko's daddy issues over donuts, inspiring Stark to find the cure for his condition. At the Stark Expo, Hammer's drones go rogue. Iron Man and War Machine battle Whiplash and his army of drones until Vanko gives in and blows himself up. Thor, the arrogant crown prince of Asgard, invades Jotunheim, thus shattering the fragile truce between the Frost Giants and Asgardians. Odin banishes Thor to Midgard, aka Earth, stripping the God of Thunder of his power until he can prove himself worthy. Meanwhile, his brother Loki, the God of Mischief, plots to steal the throne from under Odin. Thor lands in New Mexico, where he's intercepted by a team of scientists led by Jane Foster. Thor tracks the location of his iconic hammer to a pop-up shield facility. He attempts to recover Mjolnir, but finds he's unable to lift the hammer and is captured. Hey look, it's Hawkeye up in the nest. Meanwhile, Loki discovers he's an adopted frost giant and offers Loki, his true father, the chance to kill Odin while he sleeps. In need of Thor, the Warriors three head to Midgard and battle Loki's massive destroyer. Thor offers to sacrifice himself to save the others, proving himself worthy, and thus Mjolnir returns to him. Loki betrays Loki and kills him, but before Loki can destroy all of Jotunheim with the Bifrost Bridge, Thor returns to stop him. Loki fakes his death. Thor makes amends with Odin and declines the throne, admitting he's not yet ready to be king. In 1942 Brooklyn, Steve Rogers is repeatedly denied by military recruiters due to his small stature. After finally enlisting, Rogers shows no hesitation jumping on a live grenade to save his peers. His heroic act lands Rogers as the test subject for the Strategic Scientific Reserve Super Soldier Program, making him stronger, faster, and way more handsome than ever. Meanwhile, Johann Schmidt, aka the Red Skull, and Armin Zola harness and weaponize the power of the Tesseract. The army uses Captain America as a star-spangled mascot to sell war bonds, until Cap Hears his old pal Sergeant Bucky Barnes is missing in action. Rogers convinces Howard Stark and Agent Peggy Carter to drop him behind enemy lines. Cap infiltrates the Nazi Hydra Fortress and single-handedly rescues his pal Buck along with his entire unit. Stark hooks Cap up with a vibranium shield. Cap recruits a team of trusted soldiers to take down the remaining Hydra bases. While attacking a Hydra train carrying Zola, Sergeant Barnes is seemingly killed in action. Rogers sneaks aboard Red Skull's New York-bound plane full of weapons of mass destruction. Cap sacrifices himself by crashing the Hydra plane into the Arctic where he takes a 70 year ice nap. Loki steals the Tesseract from S.H.I.E.L.D. for the other's mysterious master. Nick Fury initiates the Avengers Initiative. After a confrontation in Germany, Loki surrenders to Stark, Romanoff, and Cap. Thor drops down from the sky in an attempt to return Loki to Asgard, but he is confronted by Cap and Iron Man. After a brief scuffle, Thor settles for imprisoning Loki aboard the helicarrier. The Avengers argue over S.H.I.E.L.D.'s intention to use the powerful Tesseract as a weapon, Banner gets angry, and Loki kills everyone's favorite uncle, Agent Coulson, and escapes. Loki opens a wormhole over Stark Tower. The Avengers 
assembled to stop the Chitauri invasion of Earth. Hulk tosses Loki around like the puny god he is. Stark intercepts a bomb headed for the city and nearly dies flying it back through the wormhole, and the Earth is saved! Thor returns Loki and the Tesseract to Asgard. The other apologizes for his failure, and his master is revealed to be the mad titan Thanos. The reclusive Tony Stark builds an excessive collection of Iron Man suits. Aldrich Killian invites former girlfriend Pepper Potts to join his company. The mysterious terrorist known as the Mandarin blows up Tony's palace mansion. Tony escapes only to end up stranded without power in rural Tennessee. He teams up with 10-year-old Harley to track the Mandarin stronghold to Miami. Stark infiltrates the terrorist base and discovers the Mandarin is actually just an English actor named Trevor. Meanwhile, Killian blows up Air Force One. Iron Man and Iron Patriot reunite to save people falling from the doomed plane. On an oil tanker, Killian and reveals he subjected Pepper to Extremis in order to force Stark into curing the whole blowing up all test subjects issue. Tony traps Killian in a self-destructing Iron Man suit. Killian survives only for Pepper to re-emerge and kill him. Tony remotely blows up his legion of Iron Man suits as a showing of devotion to Pepper. The Convergence, a rare alignment of the nine realms that opens portals between worlds, is imminent. Jane Foster falls through a portal into another world where she is infected by the Aether. Thor brings Jane to Asgard. The Aether wakes the dark elf Malekith, who attacks Asgard with a cursed soldier. Thor's mom is killed protecting Jane from Malekith. Thor, Jane, and Loki take a secret portal to Svartalfheim to confront Malekith. Loki tricks the dark elf into extracting the Aether from Jane, but Thor fails to destroy it, allowing Malekith to draw the Aether's power. Thor cradles a fatally wounded Loki like a baby. Thor battles Malekith across multiple worlds until the Dark Elf is sent back to his homeworld and crushed under his own ship. Back on Asgard, Loki impersonates Odin and takes the throne. Nick Fury raises concerns about helicarriers linked to spy satellites with senior S.H.I.E.L.D. official Alexander Pierce. Fury is ambushed. He hands off a flash drive to Cap before being gunned down by the Winter Soldier. Cap refuses to share the data with Pierce, who labels Cap a fugitive and orders agents to hunt him down. In an underground bunker, Cap and Black Widow uncover Armin Zola's conscience, who reveals Hydra has been operating within S.H.I.E.L.D. since World War II. Rogers recruits Sam Wilson, aka Falcon, to help stop Hydra. They're attacked by the Winter Soldier, who Cap discovers is none other than his BFF Bucky. They they escape to the not-dead-after-all Fury's safe house. Black Widow exposes S.H.I.E.L.D.'s Hydra problem to the public. Fury kills Pierce, and Bucky fights Cap atop a helicarrier. Cap refuses to fight back. The airship crashes into S.H.I.E.L.D. headquarters, and Bucky pulls an unconscious Cap out of the river. After witnessing the death of his mother, Peter Quill is abducted by Yondu's Ravengers. Many years later, Quill, or Star-Lord as he likes to call himself, steals an orb containing the Power Stone. Gamora ambushes Quill on Xandar. Rocket, Raccoon, and Groot enter the fray only for all four to end up in prison. They they enlist the help of Drax to escape so they can sell the orb to Gamora's buyer. They take Quill's ship Milano to nowhere. The Collector's assistant grabs the orb, causing an explosion. Drax gets drunk and summons Ronan to their location. Nebula destroys her sister's ship, leaving Gamora floating in space. Quill rescues Gamora, but the orb is lost to Ronan. Quill enlists Yondu and the Ravengers to help in exchange for dibs on the orb. Together with the Nova Corps, they fight Ronan over Xandar. Gamora takes down Nebula, stuck aboard a crashing ship. Groot sacrifices himself to save the team. Quill distracts Ronan while Drax and Rocket destroy the Warhammer, freeing the Infinity Stone. The Guardians hold the stone, and together they hone the power to defeat Ronin. Rocket grows a new Groot from his old pal's remains. The Avengers raid Baron Strucker's Hydra base in Sokovia to retrieve Loki's scepter. They run into twin test subjects, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch. Stark and Banner secretly use the AI from the scepter's gym to complete the Ultron Global Defense Program. Convinced he must end humanity to save Earth, Ultron destroys Jarvis and crashes the Avengers party. Ultron kills Strucker and uses his base to build an army of Ultron robots. Ultron's deal with Ulysses Claw for Wakandan Vibranium is interrupted by the Avengers. Scarlet Witch forces them to see terrifying visions, causing Banner to Hulk out. Tony rocks the Hulkbuster armor to stop the big guy's rampage. Ultron forces a Korean scientist to create a powerful body made of Vibranium. Wanda reads Ultron's mind and sees his plan for human extinction. The twins turn on Ultron, who captures Romanoff and escapes. Stark uploads Jarvis into the vacant synthetic body, and the vision is born. Ultron uses Vibranium to lift the Sokovian cap city high above the ground with plans to crash it into the earth and trigger global extinction. Fury and War Machine help evacuate the floating city while the Avengers battle Ultron's army. Quicksilver sacrifices himself to save Hawkeye. Scarlet Witch destroys Ultron Prime but the city is falling. Thor and Iron Man overload the machine, breaking apart the landmass and saving the earth. From the new Avengers headquarters, Cap prepares to train his new team. Hank Pym retires from S.H.I.E.L.D. to keep them from replicating his Ant-Man shrinking tech. In the present day, his daughter Hope and former protege Darren Cross run Pym's company. 
Cross checks the shrieky suit of his own, Dean the Yellow Jacket. Freed from prison, Scott Lang visits his daughter, but is sent away by his ex and her new policeman husband. Lang finds out Baskin Robbins don't play and is fired due to his criminal record. Louise convinces a desperate Lang to join one more can't miss heist. Lang unknowingly ends up stealing Pym's Ant Man suit. Lang returns the suit to Pym, who recruits Lang to be the new Ant Man. Pym refuses to let Hope don the suit after losing her mother, the Wasp, to the Quantum Realm. Ant Man has a run in with Falcon. Lang and his team infiltrate Pym Tech to sabotage Cross. Yellow Jacket unveiling the subsequent sale of the tech to Hydra. Ant-Man battles the Yellow Jacket, ultimately going subatomic to defeat him. The Avengers stop Brock Rumlow from stealing a biological weapon, but end up blowing up a bunch of civilians. After the shit show in Legos, Stark endorses the proposed Sokovia Accords. Cap rejects the idea of the United Nations playing babysitter. While the Avengers argue, Helmut Zemo steals a book with Hydra's code to control Bucky's mind. At the signing of the Accords, an explosion kills King T'Chaka of Wakanda. T'Challa vows to avenge his father's death. Cap and Black Panther chase Bucky before being detained by authorities. Bucky claims Zemo is the real bomber. Cap forms a rogue unit to stop Zemo from defrosting an army of mind-controlled super soldiers. Stark assembles a team to stop them. In Germany, a clash of heroes ensues, so epic fanboys around the globe collectively web their pants. Black Widow flip-flops, allowing Cap and Bucky to escape. Stark secretly follows Cap, and they come to a truce. Zemo reveals Bucky killed Stark's parents, and the battle is back on. Cap eventually manages to shut down Iron Man's suit and abandons his shield. Zemo attempts suicide, but Black Panther is and having that easy way out bullshit. In Wakanda, Bucky is given the capsicle treatment. Caecilius steals mystical texts from his former mentor and aspiring Professor X cosplayer, the Ancient One. Arrogant surgeon Stephen Strange survives a nasty car wreck but suffers career-ending hand injuries. Strange seeks the mysterious healers who helped a paraplegic man walk again. Mordo welcomes Strange into the Kamar Taj. The Ancient One accepts him as a student of the mystic arts. Strange befriends Master Wong and learns of the three sanctums that protect Earth from interdimensional threats. Case Cecilius destroys the London Sanctum and uses the stolen text to contact Dormammu. Doctor Strange, aided by the Cloak of Levitation, defends the New York Sanctum. Cecilius kills the Ancient One and heads for the Last Sanctum. Strange and Mordo arrive in Hong Kong to find everything completely f***ed. Doctor Strange uses the Eye of Hagamoto to reverse time. He enters the Dark Dimension and traps Dormammu in a time loop. Strange is killed over and over again until Dormammu accepts his bargain, leaves Earth, and takes Caecilius with him. The Sovereign enlists Quill's guardians to slay the Abelisk in exchange for Nebula. Rocket can't resist swiping a few Anulax batteries, and unknown entity saves the guardians. The mysterious savior reveals himself to be Ego, Quill's celestial father. Ego invites them to his home planet. The Sovereign hired Yondu to capture the guardians. Yondu refuses to give up Quill. Taser! <laughs> Sorry. Taser Face leads a mutiny, and Yondu is locked away with Rocket. They rig up the ship to blow and escape. Nebula dive bombs her spaceship at Gamora. They exchange gunfire and argue about their abusive galactic titan father. You know, sister stuff. Mantis warns Drax of Ego's plan. Peter uses his newfound celestial power to help Ego activate his seedlings across the universe. Until Ego admits that he killed Peter's mom. Quill battles Ego while Rocket rigs a bomb in Ego's brain. Yondu sacrifices himself to save Quill. I'm Mary Poppins, y'all! Nebula sets off to kill Thanos, and Yondu is sent off with a proper Ravager funeral. In the wake of the Chitauri invasion, Adrian Toomes cleans up wreckage in Manhattan. Damage Control tells Toomes to take a hike, but he keeps enough Chitauri tech to create weapons like the Vulture Suit. Peter Parker ignores the academic team to focus on crime fighting while in Washington for the academic nerd off. Spider-Man climbs the Washington Monument to save his doomed classmates and score a few points with his crush. Spider-Man spoils yet another weapons deal, triggering a blast that splits the Staten Island Ferry. Iron Man gives Spidey a timeout. At home, Homecoming, Peter discovers Toomes is his date's father. Peter leaves the dance to stop him. Toomes leaves Peter to die under a collapsed warehouse. He bench presses himself free. Spider-Man steers Stark's hijacked jet to a crash landing. Mr. Stark officially welcomes Peter to the Avengers, but he declines, choosing to remain a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Thor breaks free from bondage and slays the arrogant fire demon, Surtur. Thor exposes Loki, who has been posing as Odin. Doctor Strange sends Thor and Loki to Odin's hiding spot in Norway. Odin dies, freeing his firstborn, Hela, the super sexy goddess of death. Hela crushes Thor's hammer with her bare hands and tosses her little brothers into space en route to the vacant throne in Asgard. Valkyrie captures Thor on the junk planet of Sakaar. In the Grand Master's Contest of Champions, Thor survives a brutal clash with Hulk. Thor, Banner, and Valkyrie recruit Loki, because that always turns out so well. They take on Hela's resurrected army. Loki places Surtur's crown in the eternal flame, igniting Ragnarok. Thor and the surviving Asgardians escape while Hela is left to die at the hands of Surtur. Oakland, 1992. King T'Chaka kills his brother for hooking up Ulysses' 
claw with stolen vibranium. To cover up the truth about his brother, T'Chaka leaves his orphan nephew behind. Dick move! In present-day Wakanda, fur-loving vegetarian M'Baku challenges T'Challa's coronation as king. T'Challa bests M'Baku, but won't kill him. Eric Killmonger, T'Chaka's abandoned nephew, helps Claw steal a Wakandan artifact in London. Claw attempts to sell the item to Everett Ross in Korea. Black Panther shuts it down and hands Claw over to Ross. Killmonger breaks Claw free, only to execute him and drag his body into Wakanda. Killmonger successfully challenges T'Challa's throne. He throws T'Challa off a waterfall. T'Challa snaps out of a coma and returns to take back Wakanda. He takes on Killmonger while the tribes wage war. T'Challa stabs Killmonger, who refuses medical attention. Killmonger chooses to die a free man over incarceration. T'Challa turns Eric's childhood apartment building in Oakland into the first Wakandan outreach center. Aww. Thanos finally gets off his big purple ass to collect the Infinity Stones. Aided by the Black Order, the Mad Titan sacks Xandor and takes the Power Stone before boarding Thor's ship carrying surviving Asgardians. Loki is killed while Hulk escapes to Earth via the Bifrost. Bruce Banner warns Doctor Strange and Stark of Thanos' plan to restore balance to the universe through genocide. Ebony Maw and Obsidian take Manhattan to collect the Time Stone, but can't shake Iron Man and Spider-Man. Meanwhile, the rest of the Black Order ambushes Vision and Scarlet Witch's makeout session, but Captain America and the Rogue Avengers intervene. The Guardians of the Galaxy come upon Thor floating through space. Rocket and Groot accompany Thor to Nita Valir to forge Stormbreaker, a legendary battle axe capable of ending Thanos. Thanos kidnaps Gamora. On Vormir, Thanos throws his beloved Gamora to her death in order to collect the Soul Stone. Stark and Spidey free Strange, kill Maw, and head to Titan to confront Thanos. They meet the rest of the Guardians and devise a plan to stop Thanos. Strange looks forward in time and shit doesn't look good. Things don't go according to plan. Strange trades the Time Stone for Stark's life. In Wakanda, the Avengers battle Thanos' army. Thor arrives in style and the rest of the Black Order are eliminated. Desperate, Wanda kills Vision to stop Thanos from taking the Mind Stone. Thanos reverses time and claims the Mind Stone. Thor throws Stormbreaker to Thanos' chest, but it doesn't stop him from snapping half the universe into dust, including most of your favorite heroes. The Avengers defeated, Thanos enjoys a beautiful sunset. Not long before the snapping, Scott Lang is on house arrest. Estranged from the Pims for working with Cap's rogue Avengers in Germany. Yeah, this feels pretty low stakes, all things considered, right? Right. Anyway, Lang reaches out to Hope regarding weird messages he's been getting via quantum entanglement with her mother, the original Wasp, Janet Van Dyne. Hank and Hope kidnap Scott to help locate Janet in the subatomic levels of the quantum realm, but all three end up captured by Ghost and Hank's former partner Bill Foster in an effort to gather quantum energy from Janet. Pym and Hope escape but are captured by the FBI. Shit, for people who can shrink, you'd think this family would be more elusive. Scott breaks them out. Hank descends into the quantum realm to rescue his wife. They reunite and kiss despite her not brushing her teeth for like 30 years. Janet hooks Ghost up with some quantum energy and she's cured. Both Ant-Men are reunited with her wasp and all is well. Until they decide to mess around in the quantum realm again at literally the worst possible time. The Avengers lost. Tony Stark is stranded in space. Thanos is farming or something. All hope rests on a 20-year-old pager from Radio Shack successfully transmitting a distress signal across the galaxy. And that's the story of every Marvel movie so far. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Arcade Cloud for more original animations. And post your predictions for Avengers Endgame in the comments below.